When you visit Arizona, time is measured in moments, not minutes. Like the moment you see the Grand Canyon for the first time. Visit a new state of mind. Learn more at hereyouareaz.com. Hey guys. Welcome back to Cozy Room. Welcome back. Hey guys, my name is Shan. This is episode nine. Proper communication is what I want to talk about today. First, I'm going to talk about what's good, what's not good, what's up with the girls, and then we'll get into today's topic. How you verbalize your feelings, that's probably how your child will verbalize their feelings. If you lack emotion and empathy for people, your kids will lack emotions and empathy for people when they need it. Your kids never see you cry and you wonder why they never show emotion and they're so angry and everything's such a big issue all the time because they're holding in their emotions because they think that's what they're supposed to do because they see you do it. And if your children admire you, they're going to copy you. They will probably grow to hide their tears because you hide your tears. So if you get to where you're going in life and it was a struggle for you, you're setting your child up for a struggle. If you get where I'm going with this, your good communication methods will show up in your kids. And if your communication is horrible, your children's communication will be the same way. And that's why I want to talk about proper communication for the betterment of our kids. No, I couldn't do another season and not include the Table Topics conversation cards. Of course I have them. Of course I have the best starter questions that there are, okay? These cards are a fun way to get to know your friends and family or someone you're dating. Either way, you can get your own Table Topics cards on tabletopics.com. The stack I have can vary from the family stack or the saver stack or do-it-yourself therapy. Either way, there's so many different categories of cards that you can get, especially for this holiday season coming up. So if you would like to get your own cards, go to tabletopics.com, use my code SHAMBYPODDEN in all caps, and get your discount. Get a great gift today. Now back to the show. If you're looking for hoodies, sweatshirts, long sleeves, stickers, or even coffee mugs, aka tea mugs, because I don't know why they don't give tea that credit, check out the Cozy Womb Shop and support this podcast. It is Monday and there are 15 more days till Christmas. But what's good? Um, I'm alive. Anya is in the beta club. So proud of her. Ari got second place in the spelling bee. And I've been going to the chiropractor, which has been amazing. What's not so good? Uh, This bill money week. Ew. Every day this week, I have a bill due. Um, credit card, utilities. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But that's life. Okay. And uh, I have to remind myself if you can't control it, let it go. And um, along with this, I have to go to the office, drive home for the office, take care of the girls, put two cents together to make some dinner go to the next day, go to the next day, go to appointments, come home, take care of the girls. Like, it's a lot. It's a heavy week. And hopefully my cycle doesn't come because if that's added to the mix, oh my goodness, what a struggle. But I'm a mom. That's what I do. I can do it. And what else is going on? Nothing else is going on. Um, I haven't heard anything 
from these people's insurance to fix my truck. So my truck still looks ugly. I still have my truck. I don't have a rental. And it's frustrating because I want to get my truck fixed so I can be done with this whole situation. Uh, my brother has vehicles, but I don't drive manual. I don't drive stick shift. So I can't use any of his cars that he has because, yeah, we're not going to do that. I hate driving stick shift. Like, I don't like the moving and the jerking and none of that. That's not my steez. But anyway, let's just get into this episode. Teaching your kids how to properly communicate. Let's just get into it. Number one, in order to do it, you got to be a good listener, first and foremost. Number two, do not ignore people because if your child sees that you can ignore people, they're going to think they can choose who they can ignore also. Number three, your body language says a lot. So if you are showing your child body language like you don't care or you're annoyed, then they might display that to you when they don't care and they're annoyed. So if you don't show it, they don't know it, okay? And if they learn it at school, you can tell them what's not acceptable at home with you. Number four, how would you feel if this happened to you? I think having that scenario discussion with your children before anything happens will better prepare them for different situations that you won't be around to help them through. Number five, stop crying so I can help. I think that's very important. A lot of kids cry and cry and cry and they're hushed and never taught how to think through their problems so they can be helped. And so when you're dealing with 24 kids in the classroom as a teacher or you're at a park, or your child is lost, they spend so much time crying and hyperventilating that no one's able to get through to them to understand what's going on or what they need. So teach your child to not cry so much and learn how to ask for help and give the proper information so they can be helped. Number six, write down how you feel. Teach your child that it's okay to write down how they feel. Um... Personally, I let my children write down how they feel, free thought. I don't judge what they write and I don't um, violate their privacy and what they write unless they want to show it to me. Number seven, teach your child how to calm down and then speak. Because when a lot of kids try to speak when they're angry or frustrated or upset, you can't understand them or they say things that they don't really mean and they don't understand. Number eight, teach your child that hitting to get your point across won't help. It just makes the situation harder and more difficult to figure out who was wrong in the mix. Because if they hit you and you hit them back, y'all both wrong. But if they hit you and you didn't touch them or say anything to them to, you know, egg that on, then... It's a clear indication who's wrong in this, right? Number nine, controlling your emotions. Talking to yourself, counting backwards, breathing, stepping outside the classroom, walking away, um, going to speak to a teacher, getting some water, getting some tissue, calming down. Um, Whatever is acceptable for your child to do in order to calm down, and have them control their emotions, allow them to do that. I think a lot of adults don't even know how to control their emotions or calm down, and that's a super problem. Number 10, tell your child that it is okay for them to cry, but it is hard for people to understand them at the same time. So if they need to cry, they can privately ask to be excused to go do so and come back and explain what was going on. I think being clear about the issue It's fine. Be okay with how you feel. Learn to calm down because when you calm down, that equals understanding. And let them understand that people do want to help, but only if they can understand what you need help with. And that is how you display proper communication for your children. 
I hope this helps. Thank you for listening to Cozy Womb Podcast. My name is Shan, and I'm just trying to make parenting easy on y'all. Catch you next time.